Welcome to fourth grade math. This is for lesson 158. We're looking at pages 285 and 286. You also have a speed drill, lesson 158 speed drill. Two minutes and 30 seconds for that. So first of all, we're gonna get started. We're gonna do a rapid calculation drill. So get your thinking cap on. Six times eight minus six divided by seven times six divided by nine minus two times eight equals. You should have gotten 16, okay? So six times eight is 48 minus six is 56 divided by seven is eight times six is, nope. I did something wrong. I had that in my head. Okay, six times eight is 48. Minus six is 42 divided by seven is uh, six. I got that right, I just had the wrong number there. Times six is 36 divided by nine is four. Minus two is two times eight is 16, okay. So hopefully you didn't mess it up like I did. All right, <clears throat> before I let you go to your speed drill, we're going to do um, a problem here on the board, if you can see it. This is a seven and one eighth minus two and one third, all right? So we need to have a common what? What's the word on, what's the number on the bottom called? Denominator, okay, denominator. Down in the business, the denominator, okay? So eight and three, what would be a common number that both of these can go into, okay? Not less than these, but bigger. Well, let's see. Eight times two would be 16. Can three go into 16? Nope. All right, well, let's go eight times three. Now that, that takes care of that. And three can't go into eight, so eight times three is what? 24. Can four go in, or can three go into 24? Yes, okay, so of course three times eight was that, so then we multiply by eight, and we multiply by three, we get eight on the top and three up on the top. Three plus eight is what? 11 over 24. Oh, sorry, we, uh, we're not adding, we're subtracting, okay. Now, can you do three minus eight? No, let's go back to that, all right, so. Got to take away from this and we're going to add, and we're adding 24 over 24 to 3 over 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. Now we can do 27 minus 8, right? 24 is going to be on the bottom because we keep the same denominator, right? 27 minus 8 is going to be 19. Six minus two is four. Can we reduce 19 over 24 or are we leaving it the same? We can leave it because 19 is prime and nothing can go into it besides one and 19 and 19 can't go into 24. So four and 19 over 24 is our answer, okay? Today we're starting area. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and take your, um, Pause the video, take your speed drill, and when you come back, we're gonna jump right into area. I'm just gonna erase this when you pause it. All right, I hope you did well on that speed drill. Taking a look at your page, Area is the inside of a shape, okay? To find, what, to find area, we must divide the inside of the shape into square units, okay? So what shape is the floor? Maybe in, in your bedroom or um, in your kitchen. What shape is that floor? Probably a rectangle. And think of a floor that would have, have a rectangle. If you were wanting to put carpet or different flooring in uh, 
Would knowing the perimeter help? Just the perimeter? No, you'd have carpet all the way around the outside, but would you have carpet on the inside? No. You need to know how much we would need for all of the floor, right? And so that is where area comes in, all right? So you've probably heard commercials where carpet is sold by the square yard. A square yard is one yard long and one yard wide. If you have four yard sticks, oh, I don't have four yard sticks, I'm sorry. You, if you did have four yard sticks, you could place them in one here and then one going up and in a square and you would see a square yard. So um, I only have one yard stick, so I can't do that. But um, possibly another time I can, get all of our yardsticks and, and see if I can do that maybe next video. Um, so up, up here I've got uh, our chart area is the inside of the geometric shape. Here's a rectangle, okay? So it's divided into square units, right? So one, two, three, and you see they're numbered and so you could count all of these and you get to 32. Okay, so that's one way to find out how many square inches are in this uh, rectangle. Another way to find that out, and we're, we're not really looking at this, we're not going to do this today, but it is um, important to know, and we're gonna be looking at it in the next lesson, is that we can add all of these up, we can count all these, but what's quicker than adding? What's our, what's our mathematical way of, of adding quicker? Multiplying, right? So you see these numbers, it's eight inches across the top, four inches down the side four here and eight on the bottom, right? Okay, so if you were to take one side, four inches, and multiply it by eight inches, what would you get? 32, right? Okay, so here, our formula that we're, we're I'm just gonna briefly go through this just, just so you understand. A equals L length times width. A equals eight times four, a equals 32 square inches, okay? Same thing with a square except for they're gonna be equal on all sides, right? So you see over here it's 25. Five on each side, so five, side A equals side times side, area equals side times side, A equals five times five, and five times five is 25. And we always put our units in square inches or square feet or square yards. Um, or if you don't have that, we just say square units, and that's what you're going to be doing on the first page, okay? So area measures the surface of the simple closed region. Area is found by dividing the region into square units. You see this, that purple box of boxes is 96 square units, all right? If you were to count all of those, you would count 96. This odd shape is uh, 55 square units, okay? So what you're gonna be doing in section one is to find the square units in each figure. So you're gonna count up all the squares, okay? So there, there's only one of them that you could use the multiplying and it would work. Um, everything else is oddly shaped. Um, section two is to count the number of squares square inches in this rectangle? And answer the question, is there a better way to find the area without dividing the object into square inches and counting the squares, okay? So, you should know the answer to that. And you don't have to say what it is, you can just say yes or no. Um, All right, so then 
Turning the page over, section three is just naming the geometric figures. Okay, so those are, we've done all of those before. Um, in the review, I want you to pick one of the divide and check and do both divide and check. Um, number five, go ahead and do both story problems. We, we'll just get some extra practice on our story problems. Um, and then section six, I want you to do D and then pick one out of A, B, or C, okay? Um, and then section seven, do C. You're using the formulas for these. This is perimeter, so don't worry about area now. This is perimeter. I want you to do C because it's a square and then pick either A or B, one of the rectangle ones, okay? All right, so that's what you're doing on your page today. Um, and there isn't any homework for this section, so just do what I've given you. And um, if you need more work and want to finish up the rest of it, because there's not that much extra, um, you can. Um, otherwise, you can finish that up and work on that. But if you have questions on this area, uh, we're going to be adding more of it tomorrow and just trying to help you understand more of the area. Um, but if this is really a hard concept, let your parents know so that they can let me know and we can try to work that out, unless your parents know how to explain it in a different way, and that's fine too. Um, but we wanna help you out as best we can, and I will see you in the next lesson.